Little widow, widow play that kind of put pink socks over the line. A lot of times Bougie wasn't being as probably aggressively contested as it probably should have been. But um, either way, we're looking to get some of those additional thoughts in the full post game. We'll be right back with that. And I believe we'll have... Yeah, we, I think we'll have uh, Yukio, the Pink Sox captain, in to discuss that win. And uh, yeah, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the CGL post game right for this. I can see a little bit of the reset, but it is a little bit of a different kind of strategy where you want to hold um, a specific target. Ooh, nice pull here from the no, okay. able to pick up the soul reaver. Very solid Ooh. spot goes down. Bougie's able to take down the turret with the advantage going the way of Buffalo Benito's early, getting all the kills. Just continuing to cause them problems. Yeah, quite a few problems. They just need a little more damage over the top. Now Coalescence coming out though from the attackers. Oh. The shatter as well. Oh my god, caught up quite a few killer dog popping off. That's four kills in the feed for that Reinhardt. And Buffalo Benitos has not been stopping. Can we turn this around? Looks like it actually is going their way as the defensive Graviton comes out. Huge combination here. Oh, would have taken out. And kills completely going the way of the defenders. Well, here comes the Shatter, though. Caspi oh, catches shatter. a couple here on the top. Can't finish it up. Oh, but gets a pin on the H-bomb. There we go. Now things going the way of Pink Sots. Solid play from this Reinhardt. And very good. Soul Reaver here on Zarya. Full charge. Uses a Graviton. Finds a couple. Here comes the attackers, though. Graviton coming the other direction. It's a sound barrier, though, for the defenders. Oh, Fantastic it. response. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. That was nasty, people. That was another Graviton coming out. The Dragon Strike coming straight through. Bougie able to pick up a couple. The Graviton in the other oh. direction does nothing because no one can follow up. But a solid attack. Yeah, Here we go. Yep, Pink Sox looking like they will be able to cap this. Kill it all coming back in the contest. There's an EMP, oh, though. That could be huge. Down, There's a bomb as well. He's able to find Cast Speaker. Maybe the defenders can hold this. He goes, the tanks don't see him at all. Here it is from behind. Able to catch three, I think. Or oh, yeah, gets pooped back. Cast Speaker in there oh, as well. Yeah, There's the Rocket Rush from H Bomb. Oh, they're really tanks. Yeah, just piling off right now. Piling on H Bomb. They'll be both tanks. But uh, I don't know if that's really what you want to be right now. Yeah, now the Rocket Barrage gets both supports, though, from Bougie. Here's a third onto a more, and that's huge for this uh, this fair overtime meter starts to tick down. That oh, may pit. just do, but Killer Dog's coming down. Oh, Lucy looks kind of on the point, chilling out a little bit. And with a little touch, I don't know if Reinhardt will be. Able. Oh, he gets punched Ooh. on the point! <laughs> they're coming up on a grab and uh, shatter here. So they actually have some pretty big ultimates to uh, not let them contest this point. But who needs that when you can just kill them all with Hanzo? <laughs> So aggressive there. Name's Juice able to go in and get a few picks there towards the end. Oh, yeah, well, completely agree. I, I think the Junkrat scared them a bit. Yeah, they, they just got up to the choke a little bit too early and delayed, and Bougie was able to find that pick onto the more. Oh my god, again oh, in again. a second. Oh my god, what a double there for Bougie. Blade. Sound barriers from both teams and a shatter Ooh, as shot. well. We'll see if H-Bomb can cut through this healing. It doesn't look like that'll be the case. Another Graviton here coming out for the attackers. Oh, Dragon Shrug combo. Oh. Mini Soul Reaver with a triple. Oh my god. They just don't have anything to defend against it. Well, here's the Graviton coming out now. And there's the combination. Oh. H-Bomb with the double actually gets down two tanks before finally being taken down by its opposite Bougie staff. Still the kills going all the way above Buffalo Benitez.
And welcome to the CGL post game. I'm your host, Selton Pepper, joined by Headrammer. We also have Yu Gi Oh, the um, captain of Pink Sox, after winning that finals three to one over Buffalo Benditos. A spectacular performance there from Pink Sox after a slow start, losing on Gibraltar and coming back to win three one. And uh, kind of the way their season went, right? Starting out in week four at 0 and three, having to adopt a negative record, winning five straight games, getting into the playoffs, and then beating this number one seed. So all the way around, really solid, um, really fun game to watch too. I think it was um, really. A lot of nail-biting team fights and really went right down to the wire but and congratulations to pink socks um yeah yukio congratulations on on the win and your team played spectacularly um, you guys like to do a lot of flexible kind of unique strats we would talk about it in the breakdown a little bit but what was your approach coming into this game knowing that you had played buffalo bentitos previously in the season um we were or i guess i was more of nervous about it i don't know about my team but I don't know, with them having two weeks to practice, it was kind of nerve-wracking. You kind of thought that break might have given them like a little bit of advantage in that preparation? Um, probably, yes. Uh, do, do you think, though, you having to play during those weeks almost like allowed you to kind of keep that momentum as you went at this fight? Because, like, obviously Buffalo did have a break, but, I mean, we don't know how much they were practicing or scrimming during that time. Um, it could, for all we know, it could have been like New York XL or they were playing Minecraft instead of scrimming. Yeah, <laughs> um, I guess we did, but still, they were a pretty good team, so. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I guess they've, they've been kind of our number one seed for quite a while now, so it was going to be a difficult match going in. So, like, we, you started off there on Watchpoint Gibraltar, and um, you guys obviously started off pretty, pretty good in your attack there. Uh, running a little bit of the Arisa Hog attack, which actually hasn't been as common uh, on Watchpoint for a little while, at least without a Bastion. And you guys got up for the first and second really long time, and you guys kind of got caught up on the third point uh, on your attack, and Buffalo was able to kind of burn a lot of your uh, time down. What do you think gave you guys the most trouble on that third point? Um, I guess we... Mm, we didn't really know what we wanted to play, I suppose. And we just didn't mm -hmm. have the right picks, or I guess I don't know how to put it. Yeah, I get what you mean. Because like when you, that third point, like corner, can be like really difficult to push push around. And you guys, um, I believe, was it you that told me that um, you guys were playing with uh, not like your normal main tank? I think you had one of your DPS players something. Yeah, main tank. we were missing our main tank. He's in the military, so he wasn't able to make it today. And so mm, one think... of our DPS flex players picked up main tank. Did that make things more difficult than usual for you guys? Um, not, well, it did change our gameplay a little, because as you know, our main tank is very aggressive, and he's always yeah. pushing up into the other team, so it was a bit of I mean, I, I think your DPS but... player who was subbing subbing this time for main tank, <laughs> he was definitely replicating in that and being hyper aggressive. I saw him yeah. quite many times in the back line of the enemy team. Maybe that's why you picked Aris at first. I don't know, but yeah, it didn't. Could be. It changed it, but we got a hold of it, like the new play style, quite. Yeah, you guys definitely seem to kind of adapt a little bit more to the different uh, changing as it went along. And then you went on to Volskaya there, and both teams kind of, uh, this game overall, it felt like it was a very attack heavy game, um, where both teams really started some struggling on the defense on a lot of these points, and it was just like attacking over and over and over, especially on Volskaya, where both teams got to kind of re-attack again. When you guys got down to the wire on that first point attack, like the second time you were attacking, um, and Bougie got that barrage, would you say that kind of barrage is really what set you guys up to win Volskaya? Um, most likely, yes. Um, because we kept going back and forth, and the barrage just kind of sealed the deal for us. Yeah, because I think that's what allowed you, you guys snowballed that into second point, right? Yeah. Okay, and then, I, both teams were back and forth on these uh, first two maps, and then you guys went to Ilias. Are you guys much stronger on control, or did you just find something that really worked well? Um... Personally, I don't have a like good luck with Ilias, but I think we just found a comp that worked for us and we performed really well with it. Mm -hmm. And then we went to King's Row, and that was was a map for sure. For <laughs> sure, there. 
Um, you guys kind of. You guys both uh, both teams kind of struggle a little bit at certain points, but then both teams were end up, end up able to cap the entire thing. So you guys lost a lot of time on your original first point, um, which really kind of hurt you guys. You're going to your second, third points because uh, you didn't really have much time um, to push into there. What do you think gave you guys like allowed you guys to push through second and uh, third so easily Over on your first attack? Um. If I'm honest, I don't really remember, but I guess it's we weren't really blur. expecting their comp, yeah. And mm -hmm. so, once we made a few changes and realized what we were playing against, we were able to just roll through them. Well, not really roll yeah. through them, but... Yeah, I get what you mean. Then, you guys were also able to, so obviously both teams capped both points. And, uh, you guys capped with just a little bit under a minute left, so they did get another chance to, uh, who attacked you guys when you guys when you guys were planning for that second defense where both teams had a minute to two minutes of time left what were your, what was going through your mind um i kind of regretted pick, regretted uh picking mora <laughs> mm -hmm. i remember that was brought up but i don't know why did you regret picking mora because we had a far and Originally, I thought we were running goats back because I wasn't paying attention, and then we got to oh, point, okay. and my team was like, "Oh, you're throwing. Where are you on Mora?" <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Once we made the switches again, we got on the right track. Yeah, because I think they kind of like obviously they were running a little bit of the snowball comps as well, so they kind of snowballed through second, but you guys were really holding them third. So when they got that far on their own attack. Uh, were you guys concerned when you had that attack as well? Like it pushed that far with only with less than two minutes left? Um, I don't think we were really concerned, but it kind of did make us question. We kept making jokes towards their tank not to get pinned. I don't know if you guys noticed, <laughs> but it happened. No, a lot. no, no, no. We, we noticed. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I made some a few comments about that. Yeah. We were like, "Oh, stay on the payload. Just don't get pinned off of it." I believe Zuzu <laughs> said that. Yeah, well, at least you guys are able to even make jokes in the moment, because that's actually, I think, a really good thing <laughs> yeah. a team can do. Because, like, obviously, tensions are probably really high in a moment like that, and when you're, like, trying to push in overtime. And to be able to make jokes, I think, kind of uh, really shows kind of like a mental fortitude for the team itself. And obviously, you guys were able to come out with the uh, win that point. Is there any, like, people you want to shout on your team for, like, doing an exceptional job today? Uh, probably Bougie. Bougie and... I guess I would say Juice and Caspeak because they switched off their normal roles to play main tank more, mm -hmm. which was kind of new for them, so... Okay. Um, and, um... Sorry, were you saying anything? Oh, and I was just gonna say, especially with like what was happening in the chat and everything, just being able to keep... Bougie being able to keep his playstyle up was... Yeah, definitely, because distractions can sometimes, you know, obviously you need, you need to be focused on, like, the game itself. It's it be very easy to get distracted sometimes, and I think uh, your team showed they were able to do that, because you, you I think you, the guys throughout the season have kind of shown you guys are able to come back from uh, the place of being down, whether it be down in the series or down, like, in a uh, number of I think you guys have shown consistently uh, ability to do that throughout the season. And uh, I believe this was your first season with us in the... CGL. I guess how would you, uh, how would you like describe your first season? With us? Um, we came in the season late, and I honestly didn't think we would make it to finals at all, considering we started off with I think three losses. Yes. Yeah, so it was good to get used to this, like all the other teams, and we somehow made it here. So. You guys, did. I think, in order to win, you had to sorry, in order to get to the championship. Or even the playoffs in general, you had to win every game and Prometheus mm -hmm. had to forfeit or lose. Yeah. Every game and, and I believe almost every map as well. Or yeah. And that's <laughs> I think that's pretty pretty impressive for you guys. They're able to throughout the season give um throughout the season there was like I believe two or three teams that were undefeated for quite a while. I believe you guys gave each of them their first losses. Mm, but I think yeah. Yeah, but I think overall today, both teams played incredibly well, but obviously Pink Sauce came out as a victor. Uh, what are you guys thinking for for like next season? I know it's the season literally just ended for you guys, but uh, do you have any potential ideas or thoughts about your next season? 
Um, I think our next season will be a lot better because we're bringing in more players um, rather than fillers that we had mm -hmm. this season. So we'll have better play styles, we'll have new strats, and just... You're, you're saying even more bash and symmetric compositions. <laughs> Maybe. I was, actually, I was really surprised, especially seeing on like Watchpoint and Gibraltar where both teams ended up running Bash and you had both attack and defense Bash and I was like, I've never seen this. Well, initially like, <laughs> we were gonna run Bastion, but our DPS decided not to. And that's why we had the Arisa Hog to begin with. Okay, I, I was wondering. Okay, I was trying to figure it out. Okay, that makes it's bringing it down. I get it now. That makes like, this feels like if, I was expecting the Bastion. I think you guys were hovering over Bastion for a little bit too. Okay, it, it, it all makes sense now. Um, well, I guess... Yes, congratulations on your uh, win here and your first season with the Console Gaming League. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, Yuka, thank you so much again. Uh, like Hedrum was saying, congratulations on your win. Um, yeah, really a solid performance. And that's it. Pink Sox come away with a 3 1 win over Buffalo Banditos to take the champion tier championship. But uh, not completely done with Overwatch for the day, guys. In just about an hour, we've got the carbon tier finals between the number one seed, Wasted Potential, and the number two seed, Unacceptable. Wasted Potential still coming to this game completely Woo! undefeated. I believe they do have a draw, though, but they're still coming in undefeated against Unacceptable. He's trying to topple them and take them off that uh, tier topper, tier, tier topping pillar, I guess. I don't know. But everything on the line for those <laughs> two teams, like it, it got away from me a little bit. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but we'll be right back with that in about an hour or so, so don't go anywhere. And uh, again, just, you know, any final thoughts there, Headrammer? Um, just that uh, I thought it was a G. A uh, really good game overall. I think it really showcased that uh, currently in the champion tier, the Pink Sox is our um, number one team. They were able to bring it back from a losing situation, but it was not a stomp either way. They had to fight for it throughout the yep. entire time. Buffalo Banditos really, uh, really made them work for it, and they were. Yeah, it was just a really good game. I was happy to watch it. Even me, you know, I'll admit there was moments where I was like a little, little stressed <laughs> because like you never know what's gonna happen. But uh, no, both teams played really well. I was happy to cast this game with you. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. I appreciate you joining. And um, yeah, you're Pink Sox. Exactly right. Our teams, GM level teams, you look out for this team because they, uh, <laughs> they're totally one to be uh, taken seriously. But anyway, that'll just about do it for us, guys. Like I said, Carpentier Finals coming up later today. We'll have that for you in just about an hour. And I think I'll just about do it for us right now. So for the Console Gaming League and for Head Rammer, I'm Salt and Pepper. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.